what's up guys welcome to lp tremors where we talk all things vinyl and horror and you may uh recognize this little special guest uh this is john clauser of my music corner um i had uh mr clauser on for the slasher video the where we talk, we're talking about early slashers you might recognize him from that oh uh, john how's it going man man rocking and rolling hey don't forget the dario agento yeah oh the uh, dario agento on uh, ryan's channel Ryan's oh, was that on? That was on Ryan's channel. Okay, you're right. Ryan's, my bad. Yeah, yeah. My bad. I mean, yes. it gets confusing after a while, but <laughs> too many channels. Yeah, no. exactly, exactly. So ah, um, great but... to be here, man. Yeah, yes. Uh, I've been good. I've been good, hanging in there. Um, been busy, work, music. What? What goes on and on? <laughs> yep, I know but, that um, feeling. Finally, have the day off, as I can see you, <laughs> you as well. Yep. But um, yeah, I'm down to talk some Megadeth, and we are going to be discussing pretty. We're going to have a pretty awesome discussion. I was pretty um, pretty open, pretty awesome. Oh, I can't even make words. I'm so excited. I love Megadeth. An yeah. awesome new album. <laughs> yep, brand new album from Megadeth: The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. Um, if you have followed my channel earlier, you may have seen a video that I did about a couple months ago when. They released the first single, We'll Be Back. Um, that video's still up. Feel free to check that out if you want my all album. And I'm going to be getting to that track as we go along today. But uh, if you want a nice in-depth review of We'll Be Back, definitely check that out. Uh, fr it's from a couple months ago. You'll be able to find it. But um, yeah, so we're going to be talking in-depth about the brand new studio release from Megadeth, The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. And so... Just a little background on The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. Came out on Universal Records on September 2nd, which was in, um, while we were recording, the date we are recording was last Friday. So, um, so yeah, that was September 2nd of 2022, uh, produced by Dave Mustaine himself, along with Chris Rakestra. Um, also, this is the first record to, um, it's the first record to feature drummer, Dirk, I'm going to butcher his last name, but Dirk mm. Verburen, Verburen, I think. Dirk Verburen, the second uh, studio album to to have uh, Kiko Lerera on lead guitar. And James James Lomenzo is back. And, um, and I'm going to be getting into, you know, how I feel about this, that typical lineup change. Um, Elson got the boot mid-production. And uh, I'm going to get into more of that as the video progresses but um yeah so first album to feature dirk second to feature kiko um and this is their 16th studio album and uh it's their next uh, last one was actually what i'm wearing right now dystopia that came out in 2016 uh they haven't released an album since and uh this is actually the longest gap in the megadeth discography uh so we're talking so dystopia was 2016 we're talking about six years since a studio release from Megadeth. Um, slur of different reasons. Uh, this little thing called COVID-19 happens. Uh, Dave Mustaine himself battling throat cancer. Um, issues with David Elson, which I'll be getting into later on. But just a slew of different drama. A bunch of shit went down. Album got delayed, delayed. We really didn't know the future of this album for a very long time. But um, now it's finally here on September 2nd of 2022, The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. And um, and the reason why I have John here with me, because he's also a fellow Megadeth fan. Um, if I understand, John, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've been a Megadeth fan for a very long time. Yeah, I I first I first picked up on uh, uh, Peace Cells back in 86 when it came out. And so that one just just blew my mind as a as a 16 17 year old teenager at the time so i mean 86 was a great year so uh and that was no that one albums was no exception so uh you know of course I, I i was familiar with you know his exit from from metallica of course though i never had i never had listened to killing as my business prior to getting peace cells okay but yeah and you know speaking of this this long gap in between tour or albums I was supposed to see Megadeth in 2020 on that 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 big tour that they were doing with Lamb of God and yeah, Trivium yeah. and and so, some other uh, soil work I guess it was I can't remember the other band but I had tickets to to that show and well 
our show got completely wiped out. They never rescheduled that one. They rescheduled everything else, but they didn't reschedule my tour. So, yeah, <laughs> so much for that. <laughs> what are you going to do? Yep. Yep. Got to love it. Got to so. love it. Yeah. And um, just to give you a brief history of where I'm at with Megadeth, and I've mentioned this on my channel, probably mentioned it when on Ryan's channel at some point, but um, my history with Megadeth. They are actually the first thrash metal band I've ever gotten into. Um, I was into Metallica a little bit, knew the hits. They didn't grab me as much as Megadeth did. I'm just going to say that right now. But um, the first album I've ever heard from Megadeth was actually Countdown to Extinction. Mm -hmm. And I wore that album to death. I skin on my teeth, Countdown to Extinction, title track. Um, of course, the big hits like Sweating Bullets, Symphony of Destruction, Ashes in Your Great Mouth, song. the list goes on and on. That album is a masterpiece. I wore that album to death when I first got it. And then since then, you know, I've been really all over the catalog. So I soon after I got Peace Cells, I got Rust in Peace, the, pretty much arguably the three biggest. Peace Cells, Rust in Peace, and Countdown. But then I started getting Killing is My Business, So Far So Good, uh, Euthanasia, even Cryptic Writing going into their later catalog with um, albums like United Bomb Nations, Endgame. And then um, around the time, I was about, I'd say, 12, 11, 12 years old, somewhere around there. And it was actually in 2011 where they were announcing a new record called 13. And so when, so I was just getting into Megadeth a little bit before they, they announced 13. And I was so freaking excited new megadeth this is the first album i'm ever going into as a new megadeth record i was so stoked for it i bought it and i actually fell in love with it and that album is another album that's very near and dear to my heart and i know that's critically you know it's a little mixed some there's a lot of people that dread 13 there's a lot of people i love 13 i love 13 and i have to say nostalgia helps that out a whole lot so um but then since after that, they released Super Collider. I believe that was the album right after 13. And then they released Dystopia. So I've been just, since I got 13, I've been on top of their new releases, um, okay. live stuff, and just this goes on and on. So, and I can honestly say, as of this, as of this point, Megadeth are in my top five favorite bands of all time. Cool. My second okay. favorite metal band, um, following Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden will always be my number one, but, um, Megadeth is a very close second. They are in my top five favorite bands of all time. I can't live without them. They are a regular listen for me. And there's definitely going to be more Megadeth discussions in the near future on this channel for sure. And John, I'm pretty sure you'll be interested as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to, I got to brush up on those, on those two thousands albums. So that's, I'll right, be looking right. forward to doing that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We'll, we'll be tackling those very, very soon. Cool. But, um, John, um, how do you feel about the new record, The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead? Uh, man, I'll tell you what. This this album just comes all guns blazing. <laughs> man, uh, very. there's a lot of pieces about this album that reminds me of a lot of those early days. You know, Dave's vocals, uh, just that that drumming uh, from, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to get, I want to get his name right too. Uh, yeah, the, the, Dur uh, the Dirk's drumming Dirk is Berberman. just immense Berberman. on this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I miss Ellison's bass. Um, and, it, and it's actually not Lomenzo who's playing on this one. It's actually a fellow named, uh, uh Steve DeGior DeGiorgio that's yeah. actually playing on this. And so you do kind of miss that because Ellison had his own sound oh, to, yeah. to his bass rig. So you do kind of miss that, but. This album still delivers uh, some really strong stuff. Um, I I really was impressed with this album. Uh, it it uh, it definitely grabbed me a little quicker than maybe Endgame or Super Collider or Dystopia, where I, I I maybe listened through them once and then it just got put on my shelf and I just never got back to them. So yeah, it was it was good to give it was good to give this one a few listens and really get into it good. So okay, great, great. Um, what, what do you think about, um, is there any tracks that you really think stand out or if there, is there so, any? so, okay. So here's my, here's, here's some things that I picked up on. So I, I thought the title track was pretty cool. You have your little Monty Python, bring out your dead thing, which I thought was maybe not exactly Monty Python, but you st it, it was a good, 
good intro into the album yeah. um uh you know i thought that title song was good i don't know if you picked up on this that little there's that little guitar interlude thing before the guitar solo i'm like where have i heard this kind of sound before it sounds a little like it sounds a little like iron maiden i i and maybe it's just me i just thought it sounded very iron maiden-y um I have to go back on that i I'll, I'll let you know about that. Yeah, like, maybe it's just that. me because they just some of that inner, some of the the the, the guitar play and you know, almost even the way that it, the 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 rhythm and everything kind of sounded. It just, I mean, it didn't have the gallop of Maiden, but it kind of had that feel. Anyway, I I I enjoyed Life in Hell. I thought that was a good a, a good strong track. Um, Night Stalkers with Ice T in the middle there. I thought was that was a good uh, good track. Um, Days of Chernobyl another good track um the song sacrifice there was like a there was like a little section and this one this one might be a little bit of an uh, obscure reference for you but there was like i i picked up a little bit of it's like i feel like i heard this in an x toll song there's like this little seg i can't remember which song it was off the top of my head but there was like this descending thing that they that they do and i'm like man that sounds like x toll a little bit from like the undeceived album but mm. that's probably getting really uh, that might be a little obscure for for you uh for you, for you but uh junkie i thought it was another good track um you know the, the, the songs just keep going um one other thing i thought was an interesting two two songs i thought had had a little extra reference celebutant celebutante yep was it me or did it sound like in the middle of the song it sounded like they were gonna he was gonna go into seek and destroy hmm I that, didn't, that, I didn't that think part, that, that part that goes, da, 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 you know, Oh, like, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see was was that about. again, was that just me or is I'm like, uh, or, is, or, or is Dave channeling some, or some Metallica there? He could oh. be. Anyway, mission to Mars. There was like, there, there was like a little section there that goes, it had that really fast section. I thought almost sounds like one. You know, and the, where where it goes into the da 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 you know, into the into the guitar song. I'm like, yeah. hmm. You know, maybe, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. And I thought what I thought will be back was a great uh, mm. um, album closer. Very just again, this thing just barrels, just yeah. barrels so so much at you. I mean, Dirk is Dirk's drumming is just ridiculous on this mm. thing. Um, and 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 of course, you know, Kiko and and Dave. Uh, you know, I don't know how much of it is. How much of it is Dave? How much of it is Kiko? But they are both all over this album. And I just, it definitely is a, it, it, it had a lot of mixes of every era of Megadeth. And I really, and I really thought that was a strong album. I would give this album, a, and I'm probably, and it's probably going to get higher as the more I listen to it, but I'm going to say at least an 8.5. 8.5. So out of nice. 8.5 out of 10. And I, and I'm sure the more I listen to this thing, it's going to get, it's just going to keep getting better and better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so if I were to ask you, would you give this to somebody who maybe never heard Megadeth before, or maybe you would give this to a new fan? Would you, would you do that? Hmm. I think I want to start him off a little earlier. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think this would be a strong album for them to check into, but I, I don't know. I would kind of think, yeah, let's, let's, let's start them off with something early, like, like, like a piece sells. Yeah. Uh, or a countdown to extinction, or euthanasia, or rust in peace. Um, I even like so far, so what? You know, yeah. so far, so good, so what? I I also dug that one too. So, you know, I, I would go, I would go early. You know, give them kind of that taste where they started from, and then maybe work them over to say, okay, this is what they sound like now, and then let them decide from there. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, great. Uh, yeah, thank you, John. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, so the, the sick, the dying, and the dead. What are my thoughts? Well, well, let's put it this way. So, following off with my little history with Megadeth, um, for some album I go as Countdown to Extinction, and then you know I started getting into this more and more of the discography, and then you know I was really excited for Thirteen. I picked up Thirteen when it first came out. I when Super Collider was announced, I picked up Super Collider when it first came out. Same thing with Dystopia. And honestly, the same thing for the sick, the dying, and the dead. So yeah, so the sick, the dying, and the dead. I picked it up. I went to my local record shop, picked up the sick, the dying, and the dead right on that Friday, September um, September second. And huh, 
So I was so freaking excited because, like I said, this is the biggest gap in Megadeth's discography between uh, Dystopia and uh, The Dying of the Dead. And there it is right there. Yeah, so this is the biggest, biggest gap. And so I was my I was so freaking stoked for this. It's been announced well before COVID happened uh, that they've been in the works for a new record. But so so much drama came with this record, as I said earlier, um, the um, sex scandal with David Ellison that didn't help anything. Um, so he got the he quickly got the boot. I'm not I'm not gonna get deep into that deep into that but long story short shit went down certain sex scandal came out david ellison got the boot from megadeth so um yeah david ellison got the boot and nobody knew what was gonna happen nobody knew the future of this record and a lot of it was because of that you know his bass parts were already recorded for this record and then it was quickly announced that james lomenzo was coming back and James Lomenzo, you can hear him on albums like United Abominations and Endgame. So this is his first album back since Endgame. And um, so I was I was a little skeptical. I'm going to be honest. Because, just because there's so much drama. Because COVID-19, that was not a big help. Um, so yeah, you had COVID-19, you had the David Elson issue. Um, Chris Adler, who was, a, I guess you can call him a touring musician for Megadeth. Um, he was on the... I think he was on Dystopia, actually. Um, Chris Adler from Lamb of God. He was on Dystopia, I believe. And he was he went on that tour, and then he later just left. As, as far as I know, at least. I think Chris Adler left shortly after the Dystopia tour. So, um, And then Dirk quickly came in, and they did a few other tours after Chris Adler left with Dirk. Um, I personally never seen Dirk live. Um, I did see Megadeth with Chris Adler on the Dystopia tour. Ah, so, um, cool. yeah. So, and that was an, that was fantastic. I mean, Chris Adler is an amazing, amazing drummer, very, very talented. So, um, but he quickly left shortly after the Dystopia tour, as I said, and Dirk ended up replacing him. I haven't really heard anything Dirk has done with the band. Um, I haven't really seen much live clips of Dirk. So I didn't really know much about this guy. So I was, that was another thing I was a little skeptical with. You know, I just didn't know his style. I didn't know, you know, how he's going to blend in with Megadeth sounds. Um, so I was a little skeptical with that. Then COVID-19, just all of the setbacks re is what really kind of made me a little skeptical about this record. I didn't really know what I was going to get myself into. But as a diehard Megadeth fan that I am, I was still so freaking stoked to pick up the sick, the dying, the dead, finally. And I, my, <laughs> my long way to anticipation ended when I first got this record on the second. Um, literally right when the store opens, I was the first person in line, picked up that record. I had to have it. And I just could not wait to finally get it, put it onto my turntable, spin the hell out of it. And then so. Now, my thoughts on the sick, the dying, and the dead. Um, I'll say this right now. This is, album is actually much, much better than I expected it to be. Again, I was so skeptical. And then, um, you know, We'll Be Back, that came out. And I, as I said earlier in this video, I did a full video on We'll Be Back. So, so go ahead and check that out. But long story short, I think that song is fantastic. And that really, really upped my expectations for this record. So a little skeptical, but it definitely helped my expectations. Um, so, so yeah, this album, I think it's a lot better than I really imagine it to be. And it's, I, it's just, it fires on all cylinders. I do have some issues with this record, which I'll get into, but, um, I'll get into my positives first for this record. Um, the first positive is the production. I think this production is beautiful. And arguably, I'll go as far as to saying that this could possibly be one of Megadeth's best sounding records in a very long time. I think it's the mix, the production, the engineering, everything on this record, it just sounds fan-fucking-tastic. I have no issues with the production. It's better than ever. I mean... <sighs> 
you can hear literally every single note from come from Kiko, Dave, um, Steven or James and Dirk. Like you can, it's firing on all cylinders. with mm -hmm. And then yep. another positive I want to give for the sick, the dying and the dead is the overall musicianship. That was one thing I was a little, very skeptical <laughs> with. Like I said, Dirk is coming in first album with Dirk. I don't know how he's going to blend with the band. This is only the second record with Kiko. Um, I did really like Kiko on Dystopia. Don't get me wrong, but I'm, you know, I, it's his second record with the band. I don't know if that fire is going to continue on with this record. And then obviously David Ellison gets the boot. James uh, comes on the record as Steven. But um, as far as the overall musicianship between the, those four guys, I think it's stellar. I mean, they very much so. Really, really captured the essence, the energy, and the musicianship you would want to hear from a Megadeth record. Absolutely. So, so the overall musicianship is perfect. The production and the mix of this record overall is stunning. Another positive, I want to really capture Dirk on this record because my God, the drums, the drum sound on this record is blistering. He is. I mean, I really liked Chris Adler in the band. And Megadeth, you know, it's no secret that they've had their issues with lineups since the beginning. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, honestly, Elson and Mustaine have been the two that, I mean, Elson, even Elson, now he's not in the band. But even before that, he had a little gap where he wasn't in the band. But overall, Elson and Mustaine are, were, are the two longest lasting members of the band. Obviously, Dave. I mean, Dave is... Dave is Megadeth at this point, but as far as guitars and drummers, it's been in and out constantly oh, yeah. since the beginning. Yeah. Um. Even if you look at like Chris Paul and Gar Samuelson, they only last for two records. The classic lineup with Friedman and Menza that was from what Rust in Peace all the way to what was it Risk? Yeah, probably. It was the, yeah, that Risk. whole '90s. Like, but then yeah. after that, they got the boot, and so it's just been a gigantic clusterfuck. It's yeah. no surprise. So, but yeah, and then and then you look at at, at system a system has failed and this is there's this is mostly like studio musicians with them exactly and national, it's like a national studio record. musicians you know it's so. like it's literally like a Dave Mustaine solo record <laughs> right so yeah right. it's no secret that these guys have been in and out of the band constantly there's been so many different lineup changes but Dirk knocks it out of the park. Yes, I'll go as far as to saying that amazing. Dirk may be the best drummer from Megadeth since Menza. Yeah. I would say he's the best since Menza. Because, I mean, you're not going to beat the, that lineup between Friedman and Menza. In my opinion, that is the definitive Megadeth lineup. But um, Dirk knocks it out of the park front to back. Even the weaker tracks, Dirk is still there. He is so technical, and he is the perfect... If I, I can't think of anybody more perfect than Dirk, other than, you know, Menza. And I really like Gar Samuelson as well. He plays a lot like Gar Samuelson. I got a lot of Gar Samuelson vibes from Dirk. Yeah, so, um, he does. Yeah, yeah. He's very jazzy when he plays. He's very technical. Very similar, very, very similar to what Gar Samuelson contributed to the band. Yep. Um, And then another thing is Kiko. I think the guitars are stellar on this record, too. As you said, like, you never know who's playing what, you know. Is it David Stein? Is it Kiko? Is it wh whoever? But the guitars are blistering. I mean, the Kiko is Kiko is amazing on all songs. He is a classical musician. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of Friedman energy from Kiko as well. This is probably the closest thing you're going to get to that Friedman and Menza era of the band. Because I think... Dirk, Dirk is very similar to Gar Samuelson. I mean, but um, you hear a lot of Menza in Dirk as well. But mm -hmm. Kiko, it screams Friedman to me. Yeah, absolutely. Kiko reminds me so much of Friedman. Um, so overall, I think the guitar work overall do have some issues um, with how they arrange the guitars. I'll get I'll get into that when I get into my negatives. But overall, sure. that is a gigantic positive. So Kiko and Dirk, I think, not really knocked it out of the park on this record. So, um, but overall, I think the album cons consist consistently. I think this album's great. Mm -hmm. Um, couple weak points that I'll I'm gonna get into, but overall, the consistency 
I think there's really no I, – I have no issues really with the cons- consistency of this record. Um, So I'll get into the tracks right now. Um, Sick the Dying and the Dead. Literally in um, – John, I don't know if you picked up on this, but – I got a lot of, especially in that riff, after that little intro, bring out the dead, bring out the Mm -hmm. dead, that little intro riff, that scream Lucretia on Russ and Peace, that riff, like, yeah, I could see that. Like, that was, that scream Lucretia to me, I got immediate Lucretia vibes from that track. And then, and then um, as the song progresses, it's a very, very melodic track. It doesn't really slam you in the face like um the rest of the tracks too which i'll get into but it's a very melodic and very technical track beautiful mm-hmm. track definitely one of my favorites on the record if you were to mm-hmm. ask me but then it goes blistering to life and hell which yes. is oof, that really that song keeps you in the ass and this track is very interesting because dave really um tackles you know his issues with drug addiction and substance abuse all of mm-hmm. those lyrics are on this particular track really talks about substance abuse on here and in my opinion this is probably as far as songwriting goes on this record this one is probably one of the best or one of the strongest as far as lyrics go i agree yeah yeah so life in hell it's a blistering it just kicks you in the ass and it just takes off so um yeah life that's life in hell and also um another positive that i'm gonna give this record I actually really like the spoken word stuff on this record. You know, there's a little like, um, there's a little break in between most of these tracks where it's kind of like a little spoken word kind of type of thing mm-hmm. where Dave is just kind of talking, trying to get his point across. And um, I actually, I think that's a really good spin on this record. I've seen a lot of reviews on this record saying that, you know, that's a weak point on the record. I don't like the um spoken word it's definitely gonna be a hit or miss for a lot of people but for me personally i love it yeah i didn't have any problem with it yeah yeah and it it just it's a nice little spin on that particular record and it makes that particular track a little unpredictable if you were to ask me so yeah that's a little bit of life in hell then it gets into night soccer's featuring ice tea and again this is a track that just kicks you in the ass i love the riffs on this particular track this is just riffs galore like mm-hmm. some of my honestly probably some of my favorite Megadeth riffs are on this particular track, Night Stalker, because it's just it's all over the place. It's riff galore. And, it, and it's like I said, it's just another track that kicks you in the ass. And then um another thing is Ice T. So it's this is gonna be mixed for a lot of people. Um me personally, and this is I'm big 80s hip hop fan. I'll gladly admit that. An 80s, 90s hip hop fan, that's my stuff. So I'm a big fan of Ice T. And I do really like what it does with body count and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And um, and I do really like Ice T's part on this. He kind of continues that little spoken word thing. And it again, it's just a nice, unpredictable, unpredictable element on this record. Yeah. You know, it's I think it, I think it fit just fine. I I he had no problem with it. He fit perfect. It, it worked fine, perfect. If you were yeah. to ask me, at least. Yeah. And like I said, this is gonna be mixed on a lot of people. A lot of people aren't gonna like that Ice T's feature on this record. But you got, you have to think this as well dave mustaine and nice t they've been friends for a very long time mm-hmm. and this isn't the first time where they've collaborated you know right. dave mustaine is actually not featured on one of the body count records right. you know so yeah. this isn't this really is no surprise you know ice t is gonna eventually team up with megadeth eventually mm-hmm. they're they've been friends for a very long time since the early days right so so yeah that's a little bit of nice soccer it's, it's and that was actually a single off of this record that was actually the second single after We'll Be Back. Absolutely okay. no issues with that track at all. No. Um, then you get into the record and it just it goes, it, it just keeps going into that. It just kicks you in the ass. It's just a full force fucking thrash masterpiece. It's mm-hmm. just, it's blistering. Like Dogs of Chernobyl, Sacrifice, and Junkie, I can say the same thing for all of these tracks, for those mm-hmm. three. Just blistering, it kicks you in the ass. And then, um, like I said, with Junkie, he Again, he starts talking about drug addiction, substance abuse. It feels like a very personal record to Mustaine because he's really talking about the COVID-19 pandemic. He's talking about illness, disease, when Dave Mustaine was battling throat cancer. You know, mm-hmm. so it's, it feels like a lot of this is very personal to Mustaine. Um, so, yeah, th- those are some in Junkie, Life in Hell, 
and even the title tracks like the dying and the dead all feel very personal to Mustaine. So yeah, I that's agree. a little bit of junkie. Then it, again, it just keeps going. So S- psychopath is kind of like a little, like a minute and a half interlude. Um, and I think it, this is actually a really cool, it's, it's just like a spoken word. I love the background with Dirk Kiko, just jamming it up while Dave is delivering this little spoken word segment. I, I really psychopath is really not much to talk about. It's just, Minute and a half spoken lewd and salute. Really great, cool track, though. Great I'm intro like, into Killing Time. Right, right. Then it gets into Killing Time, and I'll be honest, this is one of the weakest points on the record, if you were to ask me. Yeah. I just think this song is cheesy as hell. He's talking about, he's talking about, you know, you're a liar, you're a liar, and it just keeps talking about pointing the finger at somebody, and it's just, it comes off as a little cheesy to me. Yeah, let's hope that's not something personal. Yeah, um, yeah. So <laughs> let's hope, let's hope at least. But yeah, Killing Time, it's just, it's very cheesy to me. Yeah. Not a bad track by any means, but it's just, it's not, it's not one of the, probably not one of the, the high least points. interesting on the record. Yeah. But um, then it gets into Soldier On, which was actually the third single. And again, it's just, it's just continuing that it's just thrash chugging and it just kicks you in the ass. So um, Soldier On, there's really not much to talk about here. It's just, Again, like like a lot of these tracks are, it just kicks you in the ass. It's a lot of chugging riffs here. A lot, it's just just a lot of lot of riffage on this track. Yeah, a lot so, of dirt. A lot of dirt, <laughs> right? So yeah, that's Soldier On, and then it gets into side four. Oh, this is a double LP for anybody who has this particular record or the vinyl version of this. Um, but then it gets into Slide Mutant, which ex- actually is one of my favorite tracks on this record. I love the yeah. lyrics on this. Uh, particular track this track and life in hell are probably the strongest as far as songwriting goes i just love the love the um how he's talking about you know these celebrities that just that you have to worship the ground they walk on or you know like these entitled entitled celebrities big money and he's just ripping on them left and right so mm-hmm. and so I, it was it's kind of funny it is cheesy it's very very cheesy but it is very entertaining yes and, very much so right right and um in an interesting about celebutan it actually features as very 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 brief but it actually features his daughter electrum scene on just a little bit of of a particular line it's very mm-hmm. very brief like um you're That's just right. you're if, if you're it's easy to skate by um, I, I actually kind of wish she would contribute more to that track because because it, it just would be interesting. You know, you never heard her sing on a Megadeth record. No. So, like, it, it would <laughs> give a little, t- little twist on the record. But nonetheless, she is in a brief portion of Slebutant. But overall, this song kicks ass. I, this yeah, is definitely one track. of the most entertaining on the record. Uh, then you get to Mission to Mars, and this is just pure cheese. <laughs> oh, absolutely. The whole, I mean... I, I want to be an astronaut. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't have to hear Dave growling about how he wants to really be an astronaut. And it's just a very it, cheesy track. Um, it's it's only seven. Point, it, it's only seven months to Mars, give or take a light year or two or three. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah I thought this was that. Was, yeah, this was a, that was definitely a, probably the cheesiest song on this album. But yeah, easily, still, easily. But still, still musically though, it was it was still musically still it's comes great. right especially at especially towards the end of this track. I really mm-hmm. like how they're yeah. just it's just a gigantic clusterfuck at the end. I like that <laughs> portion of the track. Yeah. It's still like it's an entertaining track, but it's just cheesy as hell. Yeah. Um, and then you get into "We'll Be Back," which closes off this portion of the record and on the CD version and. Right. You know, I meant I talked about this song before. Go check out my video from a couple months ago when it was first released. But this track is amazing. I my opinions have not changed on this track whatsoever. Yeah, no, I, I like. I it. got a lot of um, and I I think I talked about this in my video, but this particular particular track took me back to Good Morning Black Friday off the P Cells record. You know, <laughs> like how yep, Dave exactly. Right, right. Like how the riffage goes, how Dave's vocal delivery screams good morning, Black Friday. Oh my God. Like this is like that really took me back. 
And I think I mentioned that in the earlier video, but if you want to see more in-depth review on that particular track, definitely go check that out. But my opinions have not changed about this track whatsoever. Definitely one of my favorites on this record. And then um, you have the two bonus tracks. So Please Truck, which is a Dead Kennedy's track. And mm -hmm. then you have um, the... Um, I keep forgetting the name of that track. The Sammy Hagar it's, track. Uh, it's called This Planet's on Fire, Burn in Hell. Planet's on Fire, Burn in Hell. Those two tracks are fine. Um, they're not... They're not like um, I don't know. They're not thing anything to brag home about. They would these would be equivalent to when Iron Maiden would had done the guilt the the singles and they would record B sides, you know, right. and they it, for the import singles and stuff. That's basically what these are are, are equivalents of. So. Right, I would totally agree. But they sound but, good. The, oh, they're still really good. The, um, they're just I don't think they're really anything to brag home about, but. You're no. still gonna have a good time with these two tracks. There's really no complaints about those tracks. No, about those tracks. No. So, um, that's kind of my um brief um little review of the tracks in general. Um, overall, very consistent. Even the very cheesy tracks are still pretty fun. Um, but uh, that's kind of leads me into a negative. Some of the lyrics are just very overly cheesy. Like, um. Yeah. Some of these, some of the songwriting is great. Like I mentioned, uh, Life in Hell. I mentioned um, Celebutant. I mentioned um, even We'll Be Back has amazing lyrics. So you have those songs, even the title track, I think I have no issues with the lyrics. Um, but overall, there are those tracks that are just way too cheesy. Um, Mission to Mars, Killing Time. So like you have those tracks that are just overly cheesy. Kind of... Mm -hmm. It just makes you cringe a lot of those times. But um, it's overall not many negatives to say. I think this is a great, great Megadeth record. Um, do I like it better than Dystopia? I'm not sure. I'm, I still haven't, um, still haven't really decided that because I think both records, they have some of their flaws, but they have really, really high points. Yeah. But um, yeah, so overall... Oh, uh, as far as the rating goes, I feel comfortable giving this an eight out of eight and a half out of five. Same thing with you, John. Mm -hmm. I think this is a great, great modern day Megadeth record. Um, still haven't decided whether I like it better than Dystopia or, or if this is a downgrade, upgrade, or if I like it just exactly the same. Yeah. But overall, this is a great brand new Megadeth record. A lot better than I was originally anticipating just because of all of that drama shit that I mentioned earlier. Right. David Ellison, COVID-19, David Mustaine battling throat cancer. So yeah. overall, 8.5 out of 10. It is much better than I originally anticipated. Um, would I give this to a somebody who's never heard of the band before? Maybe not. I'm going to go with you. Maybe this wouldn't be the first record I would give them. I would probably give them either Rust in Peace or Countdown to Extinction, even maybe something like Peace Cells. But um, definitely it would be in consideration as one of, maybe one of the first records. Mm -hmm. Because this is just a good take on what modern day Megadeth is all about. Chugging riffs, um, Dave's snarly vocals, and overall just a, overall classic musicianship. So um, yeah, that's probably what i would yeah. give it in half out of ten um yeah definitely give it a shot uh you're i don't think you're gonna be too too disappointed if you have been following the band for a long time um so, so yeah overall i don't have much negative to say musicianship yeah. fantastic the production absolutely stellar overall eight and a half out of ten yep go out and buy it yeah and spend time with it Spend, spend time with spend it. I've been listening good, to this record. Spend some good time with this because this will really grow on you. And I, I kind of, I kind of envy you with the vinyl because I would, I would love to hear what it sounds like on vinyl. I bet it sounds awesome. Oh, it sounds fucking phenomenal. Yeah, I've been, I've been spending this record every day since I bought it, and you know, I have to say, every listen I've been given this record, I've been always trying, I was always finding something different, hmm. um, that maybe worked in my favor or that could be a downgrade on the record. So yeah. I, I'm always finding something different with this record, which is really cool. Yeah. But overall, I'm I've been having an absolute blast with this record. Good. So that's, that's, how, and that's how it should. That's how that's how movies, music, any of this kind of stuff should be. The more you listen to it, hopefully you you pick up on something. Oh wait, hey, I missed that. Right. Yeah. Like right. you know, like I 
I challenge you to listen to Celebuton. Celeb- how are you pronounce that? Celebuton. Celebuton. Thank you. And and uh, and Mission to Mars, and see if you pick up on those little Metallica bits, and oh, even yeah. in the title, and in the title track with the Iron Maiden uh, right. feel, you know, see if, I, see if that's just my imagination. But. Yeah, that's very interesting. I didn't. I personally did not pick up on those, but I'm gonna next time I spin this record, I'm gonna keep that in mind because yeah, that's interesting. I can see that too. I can. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I'm gonna pick up on the same thing now that you said it. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'll definitely be checking that out. But there you go. Um, th- that's our overview of the sick, the dying, and the dead. Um, our work is great, by the way. I love, I love this album cover. So badass. I love yeah. it. You have great shots of the band right here, and um, it comes with um, some liner notes. Uh, this little packet right here. Yeah. Very so nice. great stuff. Great stuff. So, so yeah, definitely check it out. It's I mean, neither of us didn't. We maybe we picked up on a couple flaws, but overall, this record is fantastic. Eight and a half out of ten, I think, is a very solid sc- score for this record. Yep. Uh, is there anything else you want to add about this record? You know, the one thing I want to mention is that you know how a lot of these records that come out lately, they just they have this particular kind of almost like a Pro Tool sound. Yeah. This this doesn't have that. At least I don't feel like it does. It doesn't have that kind of, I don't know, it, it, like like Ozzy's last album. I, there's like it had this certain kind of sound. It just sounded real sterile. It sounded it just, it just something. It's something I didn't like about it. This doesn't. This album doesn't have that. It just no. feels. It it sounds like a like a good Megadeth album should, whether he recorded it in 2022, or whether he recorded it in 1986. It was. It would have made no difference because it sounds just as good. Oh, so, absolutely. I so that's more. that's the only thing I would say about that. It just doesn't have that that 2020 no sound production sound. Typical overbearing production. It's just a. It's produced very. I have no issues with the production and the mix yep. of this record at all. Yep. I think it's just fantastic. It's a fantastic sounding record. Arguably, Megadeth's best sounding record in a long time. I would go with that. Yeah. Oh. That's all so, I got. Um, so yeah, I think we're at a good spot to wrap up this review. Megadeth, Sick, the Dying, and the Dead. Definitely go out and check it out. You already heard both of our reviews. We both have an absolute blast with this record. Definitely go out and check it out. Um, John, anything to plug? I understand you have a YouTube channel, My Music yes, Corner. Yes, yeah, I got My Music Corner. I just, I just put a, uh, I put, actually put out a wrestling video this morning. Okay. Uh, talking about, um, uh, I'm also a wrestling fan, so I was talking about the uh, All Elite Wrestling's pay per view from last night. So uh, as we were recording this, was it was would have been on Sunday night. Um, so I talk a little bit about wrestling there too. Um, I've got a couple. I'll be making some guest appearances on a couple places. I got something coming up that I'll be recording this weekend uh, with a couple friends of mine that I've met through the DDP Yoga program. Um, then there are, there are metal heads and music guys. And we did a show where we talked about our favorite 1986, uh, releases uh, a couple weeks ago. They liked it so much. They wanted to do it again. This time they're going, we're going back to 1976. Nice. So we're going to, this is going to be more of a rock instead of metal, but we're still going to have some fun talking 1976. So we're going to be recording that. So, uh, we could, we called it the rock and uh, the North and South, uh, metal connection although we'll probably have to add rock and metal to it but yeah. <laughs> uh, one guy's one guy's from canada and the other guys are live here in alabama but um uh, yeah then i got uh, some guest appearances coming up on a few channels and then that's pretty much all i've got at the moment so right. um there you go great yeah so definitely check out my music corner um john i'll link your description and um i'll look, i'll link your channel in the description below definitely Appreciate go check that. out my music corner <clears throat> Um, you're watching LP Tremors, so um, so a lot of my stuff is spur of the moment. I, I've mentioned this before. If <laughs> if I if I browse through my uh, record collection, pick up whatever. If, for example, if I want to talk about Alice Cooper, I'm going to talk about Alice Cooper. If I'm going to pick up a Rush record, I'm going to talk about a Rush record. So is a lot of my stuff is spur of the moment. But um, I do do a segment on Mondays called Feeling the Monday Blues. 
where I talk about just three random blues records out of my collection and just kind of bullshit about them for a little bit. So um, those are on Mondays. Um, and actually, and speaking of the blues, um, we are playing on something, John, right here, and Davey Gallagher from Davey's Cinema Flicks and Music Picks. Um, we're, we are planning on doing something right on this channel where we are going to be discussing five records, five blues records, to get in, to introduce somebody who's never heard of blues. So that would be, and they, there you go, right a little there. Pre <laughs> a little precursor for y'all. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. So yeah, you're going to see a lot of that stuff. So five blues records that, you know, maybe somebody has never heard of blues, definitely check that out if you want to get into blues. So those are five of our personal picks. So that's going to be recorded maybe in the next couple of weeks. Um, we I do have um, a Friday the 13th series coming. So um, with uh, Ryan Gavalier from Ryan's Vinyl Destination and Davey Gallagher, as I said. Uh, we're, we are going to be doing the third movie, um, Friday the 13th, Part 3. We're going to be discussing that on Friday night. Uh, that will be out either that night or the next morning. Uh, but we already just we have the first one out where we discuss the first movie, and we did the second movie last week. So definitely go out and check those out. Uh, those are out right now, obviously. But um, so, yeah, that's pretty much the gist on my channel. Um, just horror music shit that's pretty much my <laughs> my specialties here so so yeah just be on the lookout it's friday the 13th series uh we have the blues uh the five blues records coming out that's basically it just stay tuned hit the hit the bell um i'm not gonna say what every youtuber ever says like subscribe share you know it just copy and paste all that shit whatever <laughs> uh comment down below your thoughts on the sick the dying and the dead we would love to hear it um did you like this record? Do you think we're full of shit because this record sucks? Let us know in the comments. Um, we'd love to hear it. Um, have you have you not listened to this record? Are you is it Megadeth not your thing? Whatever. Any thoughts about Megadeth or this record? Just put it down in the comments. Uh, we'll be checking those. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, is there any last remarks from you, John? Are you good? I'm good. All I'm right. Good. Thank thank you for having me on. Absolutely. So um, follow my music corner, uh, John's channel, uh, my music corner. This is LP Tremors. Uh, as always, stay metal, stay scared. Bye, guys.